Oh, what is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and hopefully you guys had a great weekend. Now, over here in the States, we had a three-day weekend, guys, so I decided to take my family out to a national park known as Joshua Tree. While I was out there, you know, I was trying to get inspired, going like, you know, what kind of music fits this theme? And of course, you know, I had a bit of Lane 8, a little bit of Nora and Pure in there, uh, Nils Fraholm, I don't know how to say his name, um, a little bit also of Joris Bourne, certain tracks. But what I found meshed well with the environment and that feeling of calmness that you get when you're out there, the silence, it's just this piano that sounds very majestic that you can hear in the new Lane 8 track called Roads. Um, and other genres like Chiasmos Looped. And I thought, you know what, why not make a tutorial on that? So today we are going to be talking a little bit about how to achieve that nice, calm, sort of nostalgic, kind of not dumbed down, but you know, not a lot of high frequency style of piano. To make this tutorial more helpful, I will also be utilizing the stock Ableton piano, which you can find by going inside of Ableton and searching up piano. Now when it comes to this style of piano, of course there are various different variations. Some people might put chorus delay, just like I like to put tapatio, and then some people are cholula people, which I don't understand. Uh, but again, it all comes down to the vibe. But if you have these things that we're going to talk about in this tutorial, I promise you, you will get a piano which will make you go... <laughs> As always guys, if you want to support my channel, you can head over to evilsounds.com where I do have a sound bank called Exploration, which of course was inspired by my outdoor activities, hiking all over Southern California. Believe it or not, we have some beautiful sites. Uh, so check that one out if you're into this kind of music. And with that being said, uh, let's get started with this tutorial. All right guys, and welcome inside of Ableton. Now personally me, when I know I'm gonna use a piano like this in a song, I like to work on the pianos the way it's gonna sound like fast. And I like to use the chord and scale feature inside of Ableton. The scale has a little preset called C major, which I'm gonna use, and then I have the chord feature plus seven, plus four to give me that um, chord, uh, major chord whenever I move notes. So that way I can do stuff like this. Uh, and then of course I can make it more lower and Sounds pretty cool. Uh, so that's going to be kind of what I'm going to use here. So hopefully you understand uh, as I'm talking here, we are going to elongate the chord progression into a midi as wall as we go about in creating these kind of vibes in the piano. Now, the first thing, of course, is going to be open voicing versus closed voicing in these kind of chords. And it's all going to depend whether you want uh, three notes in your chords or you want two notes. And depending on what kind of vibe you want to go for, that's going to help decide. Now, what I mean by this is closed voicing is going to be, let's say here we have, um, you know, the, the C major chord, right? And we go with this here and I'll, I'll get rid of this for now just to prove the point. It's going to sound like that. Now, if I open voice this, that means that I spread out the chord progression and maybe put it. And that helps cover a, a bigger, broader range of frequency, as well as making it sound more open. I can also grab this guy and put it up if I uh, But a lot of the times what I find is when you do this, it's going to sound a lot better in lower octaves, which are where a lot of these pianos tend to play. That sounds like we are in Joshua Tree, a national park, and I kind of, we have a bit too close. It doesn't let that E flow well messy but again it's up to you but a lot of these songs are going to have this inversion and now we have that open voice going on we can also you know do um this one just down an octave doesn't sound as great and and you know that's the thing so you can kind of see the difference open voicing makes so that's the first step getting something that sounds open voice so what i'm going to do to help me create a chord progression fast with this is just put this plus four that we have here on shift number three uh, plus 12, so that's going to give me plus 16. And now when I play lower octave... You know you like that. You know you like it. So obviously it makes a little sense to go more with open voicing. And you can also get rid of that plus 16 if you don't want those high frequencies. So that way you have something a little bit more like emotional, I like to say. Also sounds a little bit more... Uh, but again, it sounds very nice. So that's the first step, the first important thing that you have to realize with these, okay? Now, the next thing is going to have to deal with velocities. Velocities are super important. So I personally like this chord progression we have. Okay, uh, so when it comes to velocities, the velocities are going to have to deal with how hard the piano is being played. Now, when it comes to this kind of music, you do have your Nora and Pure, which is a little harder, and you're going to have other vibes, but you're also going to have those smooth vibes that are just... 
like so. Very beautiful. Now, if you want to take things a step further, the other thing you could do is you could start to shift these notes just a little bit so that it doesn't sound like they're essentially playing at the same time. Exactly. Just a little bit of a. Uh, you're going to move that just to flip. You can also go into a uh, fixed grid off so that way you have more control. So that way you can maybe do something. Or just if you want to do that, but again, uh, it's up to you. It's more. Beautiful there. Now you can kind of see how that velocity plays a huge role. The other thing that we can also do is that each note can kind of get a different velocity and that's going to be up to you to determine which one's the more important one. For instance, let's say you want the low note to have the strongest press. You can definitely increase that and then you're going to be able to go from there. Now, personally, me, I like to keep things simple. So I feel like just a little bit. To get the vibe right on it. Okay. Uh, from there, the grand piano inside of Ableton is going to have these settings here, but we're not going to touch them just to keep things simple and use our own kind of effects with that. But now the next thing is if you really do want to have each note to have a different velocity, but you're lazy like me at the moment, then you can grab a velocity feature here from, uh, from Ableton and you can get a preset, which adds a bit of random, like total random, and then you can slowly add it in. You can see it randomizes a lot, so just have it be a little slight so it's not huge dynamic change. We can also use the add some random one, which seems to be a little slighter. And I think a low value will help. Okay, getting that nice warm nostalgia vibe remembering those days okay uh, so that's going to be the second important thing when it comes to it now once we have all that we're just going to put the reverb down to zero percent also the brightness down just a bit to mellow it out so it has a little bit more lows for some reason when you put the brightness up on the grand piano in ableton it kind of gets numbs the lows down a bit more but i really want that power coming down from there from there, we can put an EQ, and from here on, this is again, another spot where it can go either way, depending on what kind of piano you want. We can numb the highs more, so it's more deeper. You still get a little bit of that top end to it, but it gives you more of that nice, warm, huggy kind of piano, or you can let those out, but still mellow out some of the highs, or if you want, you can definitely come in and increase brightness. Sounds a little cleaner. It's up to you, but I'm going to choose to go in the middle. Just very mellow. All right, keeping it low. And now we're just going to add a reverb. Now, there are two options you have here. I'm a huge believer in return tracks, so I personally like to add the reverb on a return. However, I can see the problem that if you're only using a reverb for a piano, these reverbs can definitely start to stack up. And what I mean by this is, sorry, return track. So if you're on a computer laptop, your computer's already messed, like fully, fully packed by the time you have five of them open. So if you want to counteract that, you can also use an audio effect rack, which is what I would recommend. List mode, we're going to create two chains and more if you want to put more time-based effects like chorus or delay while still maintaining the piano OG original. Uh, so we're going to call one OG sound and then our reverb. See, what tends to happen is when you put this reverb up and you start going higher than, let's say, 50%, you start to lower the volume of the original piano, the un the dry version of it, and that sort of pushes it more to the back, which is something some people might not like. So we can always go there. All, only, all, all, the only thing you have to do is put that at 100%. And now you're going to have both the best worlds. Now, another thing you can do is you can also put a mono uh sound here so that the way the piano stays mono the original source and you allow the reverb or your ping pong delay if you choose to have one uh to create the uh, stereo for you so this is going to send something like this and it also gives you more of that nice retro vibe if we open it up more
Now, I personally like to put it mono when you have more of a warm vibe like this because from there, what you can do is you can duplicate your grand piano and then have a top layer to it, which might have, you know, like a little bit more reverb. You really want this one to be more atmospheric, similar like kind of John Hopkins style, and allow this one to essentially roam free. We're just going to bring it up. It's a cool technique in your landscaping as well, making room for everything in the mix. Again, you can go with either one. It just depends on the style you're trying to get. And of course, don't do this kind of booster, but uh, you kind of get the idea there. Now, the biggest thing here from there on is just adding effects that you might seem you might like. Like maybe you might choose to add a bit of a chorus or a tremolo uh, effect, which could give a nice result as well if you're trying to get more of a Western vibe piano. But if we get rid of that chorus there, and this is the layer we're adding there. Now we can also now again with this have more control and get rid of lows on this guy. So that we get tech licks there now, but we get. And this is more experimental, but you kind of get the idea that with the audio effect rack. But the biggest things that I want you guys to get out of this tutorial, if you're trying to create these kind of nice mellow pianos, the grand piano for Ableton can do a lot. But if you're looking for more of a nicer vibe, a different vibe, one that you can actually hear the notes being hit and those little artifacts that come with some recordings, then definitely invest in a good library. I feel like you can make good stuff with this piano, but if that's what you want, then you're going to have to pay a little bit more for it. Uh, get different vibes, more natural sounding reverbs and whatnot. But again, at the end of the day, guys, you can use this guy. The biggest thing is to, again, numb the highs, play with the velocities. That That is the biggest thing you can get. Mono and then reverb and you're set to go from there. It's all about, again, velocity changes. That's the way you get this to sound mellow and warm. The problem I see a lot, though, is that most people expect to get something mellow and warm when they're doing stuff. And that's going to sound good in its own right in certain environments. But if you're trying to make, again, that nature, that progressive house stuff, very mellow stuff, um, mess with those velocities. That's the key to get That's going to give you that nice piano vibe. And, of course, you can always get rid of that second note in the Catch you guys next time. As always, if you want to support my channel, make sure to head over to evilsounds.com and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.